Hello and welcome to the Paul Green Comedy Podcast for October 27th, 2024. This is episode 305. Stand-up comedian, actor, improviser, and dreamer, Paul Green, sharing my journey as I pursue my dreams in hopes of maybe providing a little encouragement to anybody out there who is desiring to pursue theirs. So... I am still here in Salt Lake City after playing Lord Voldemort at the nation's largest Harry Potter party up in Ogden, Utah. I say it's the nation's largest Harry Potter party. I probably shouldn't claim that because I don't have any way to fact check that. But I will say thousands of people in the northern Utah area do show up to uh, this Harry Potter event that is hosted every year by the one and only Dr. Hartman, who is just a remarkable man and puts on this event every year completely out of his own pocket. I can't imagine how much money he spends on it. He doesn't charge anything. He doesn't make any money. There is no concessions. There's no merchandising. Literally, he makes zero dollars and he pays for everything out of pocket including paying me to come up and play Lord Voldemort, when pretty much all I do is just uh, walk around and insult his guests. <laughs> Playfully. It's a playful uh, insulting. But I have so much fun doing it. I've been doing it since uh, 2014. And, you know, I, I kind of... I don't even really know why, but I or how, but I I created sort of my own Lord Voldemort character that actually bears no resemblance to the Lord Voldemort in any of the movies, and I would suspect also in the books. I haven't read the books, Um, but I just created my own sort of snarky, raspy voice, uh, obnoxious Lord Voldemort character, and I just walk around and just kind of roast everybody it it again kind of a, a playful way but uh kind of this snarky um you know kind of obnoxious character and I don't even really know how I came up with that um the first time I did this um this gig was in 2014. And I actually, me and a couple friends, created a little sketch, like a little Lord Voldemort sketch. And initially, we we went up to Utah um, and did it like as a sketch team. Now, the owner of the, the house and the guy who puts it on, you know, he didn't really feel that the sketch, you know, was the right fit for what he was trying to do, but... He wanted to have me back just to play Lord Voldemort. He's like, yeah, just come back and be Lord Voldemort and just kind of walk around. And that and that evolved into me um, walking the line of people waiting to get into the event because the line gets really long. I mean, it's literally like Disneyland for a day. I mean, it's um, he lives in this big, beautiful house up in kind of a nice wooded area with like big properties, big kind of mountainous properties with lots of trees and lots of, uh, you know, land on all of these properties. And the line just starts, his house is on the corner and then the street leading up to his house just starts to get lined with people and it goes down like for blocks and blocks and blocks of people standing in, in line waiting to, um, get into the event and so I just walk down the line and make fun of people and then uh you know people want to take pictures with me and all of that stuff um I say me but you know Lord Voldemort and yeah it's 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 such a blast and you know just how cool is that that here is this you know man who has spent his entire life pursuing, you know, his career as a doctor and becomes this 
incredibly successful doctor in the medical field and, you know, obviously has plenty of money, like he's doing very well financially, and he could just hoard all that money from himself or, you know, do whatever he wants, but he chooses to just as a courtesy. Nobody asked him to do it, but to say, well, you know what? I'm just going to put on a Harry Potter event, and this doctor, he plays Dumbledore. So he dresses up like Dumbledore. All of his kids, he has a big family, all of his kids, um, you know, participate, and he has all of these decorations and, I mean, like, substantial, like, set pieces. He has, like, this bus some sort of like Hogwarts bus and they set up like there's like this Quidditch game um, and you know like big I I can't even describe it like just big set pieces uh, you know that are all sort of uh, you know built to resemble you know certain aspects of Hogwarts and and there's just all of these little stations that um, are all part of the the Hogwarts and the Harry Potter uh, world and you know people just show up and just have this incredible time and it's literally at his house and I'm just going how you know how vulnerable and I, I, I don't know it's like you know that's your house right you know that's your sanctuary and yet he invites anybody who wants to come and just walk around his property <laughs> one night a year and, you know, participate and and be a part of this event. And again, he's been doing it for, I think, 14, 15 years, maybe longer. Um, so I just love that. I just love that, you know, he has an opportunity just, just to take up his, his abundance and his situation and just give a gift to the community and anybody who wants wants to come and I think there's something very ennobling and very um inspirational about that and you know it just it just makes me you know kind of think about are there opportunities for me to do that in my life and in my current situation? You know, sure, I'm not as wealthy as one of the top uh, fertility doctors in the nation, but um, I do definitely have plenty of abundance and plenty of surplus. And, um, you know, sometimes um, it's nice just to think about ways to really give in the most altruistic fashion that, one might be capable of and um yeah just uh you know it's just something to uh that i've been just thinking about and um asking myself if um i could be looking for maybe some opportunities to be a little less me focused and a little more um you know just providing love and benefit to other people um hey maybe this podcast counts huh i mean i don't i don't get anything for doing this you know i'm not i'm not getting paid <laughs> I, i'm not big enough to where you know i don't got any sponsorship deals i don't even think i'm monetized i, I I'm curious, anybody who watches this on YouTube, do ads ever run? Am, am I monetized, or do you just hit play and it just goes, like YouTube goes, yeah, yeah, this, we, we, we ain't even going to run ads on this on this show. We know not enough people are watching it. Um, I'm kind of curious, anybody who's watching on YouTube, um, leave in the comments if ads ever run. Um, I, I would doubt it. <laughs> I would doubt that they run. But, you know, I really do, um, you know, I have my selfish motivations for doing this. I've been very transparent what what I'm trying to get out of doing this, which is it's really just a chance for me to challenge myself and to overcome my ego and to um, put myself in a situation where every single day I need to be vulnerable, I need to be transparent, I need to be authentic, and put 
content out into the internets where theoretically anybody in the world with an internet connection could theoretically find it. And it really is just an exercise of um, overcoming self. So that's the selfish motivation. Now, do I have some hopes and dreams that like, oh, maybe one day this this will, you know, grow or, you know, actually become something that is more substantial, you know, that actually I could get sponsors and, you know, Facebook or YouTube is running ads and, um, sure, I'm totally open to that. Um, I'm not really approaching it in that, in that context, but at the same time, I also, um, do have a desire that the things that I talk about might actually benefit somebody that, you know, I might share an experience or share an insight or share an opinion or, you know, say something somewhat motivational or inspirational. And that the more that I'm being transparent and, um, honest and authentic about my experience, pursuing something that's very challenging and very vulnerable and can be very discouraging as a performer and as an entertainer that, Maybe something I say might, at least, if nothing else, make somebody else feel uh, heard or understood or um, maybe not alone and perhaps maybe even provide a modicum of encouragement or inspiration or maybe a, a little guidance. Uh, you know, if that happens, that would be amazing. Um, so, you know, hey. Hey. You know, maybe I'm not throwing an annual Harry Potter party, but I am putting out daily uh, podcasts about um, pursuing dreams and um, just trying to share, just share my thoughts and experiences in any manner that perhaps would be helpful. So there you go. Not that I'm trying to claim that I'm some uh, altruistic, benevolent, uh, you know, giver of abundance to the people. But I try. Maybe we all try. So, um, with that, let's talk about the next book that I have been starting to listen to called Magic Mind by, oh, I forgot his name again. Is it Jane, Dr. James Dottie? Is that his name? Yeah, shoot. I got to do so much better at citing my references here. I read these books and I don't even reference the authors. Um, Very cool book. I have been enjoying it. This first chapter, I, I think he called it Out of the Wreckage. Um, and it's kind of an interesting chapter because he starts the chapter talking about how um, he had reached this level of success in his life. And it was like unbelievable. He's like, yeah, I had this mansion overlooking the beach. I was about to purchase an island. I had a Ferrari and a Mercedes and a Land Rover and a something else in my multi-car garage and blah, 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 blah. Right. So I'm already going like, OK, uh, whoever's writing this book uh, was a multi multimillionaire. Uh, this doctor, shoot, let me just go double check his name here. It was James Dottie. James Dottie, MD. Um, but then, you know, he starts talking about, hey, you know, I had achieved all of my dreams. I had all of this money. I had all of this wealth. I had the beach house. I had the Ferrari. I had the car. I had all of the things. And then um, I think he mentioned something happened I think it was the dot com burst or something and he had um or or one of the you know stock market crashes of the like last 20 years or whatever 30 years happened and uh he had all of this money wrapped up in technology and in silicon valley silicon 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 valley and um uh whatever and he ended up just losing everything and lost his house lost his cars uh wasn't able to purchase the island. And then he said, and what's more is he was getting divorced from his wife and his daughter didn't want anything to do with them. And he sort of had that realization that, oh, wow, wow, 
wow, while I was pursuing this dream that was really centered around the accumulation of tremendous amounts of wealth, I neglected the relationships and the people who I actually wanted to be in my life, you know, his his wife and his kid. And now he was, you know, having to sell this big gigantic house, which was all ostentatious and was empty anyway. And so that's sort of his his origin story of, oh, uh, you know, money, wealth and power isn't everything. And, um, you know, and that's something that I have really tried to keep in check as I pursue this dream. Um, I always try to keep in check and remind myself that there is no amount of money that will make me happy and that there is no amount of fame that will make me happy. If that money and fame comes at the expense of the relationships of the people who I love and appreciate. And uh, even this afternoon, I met up with a good buddy of mine, my buddy Ryan, who, um, matter of fact, ironically enough, Ryan was part of the very first Harry Potter uh, trip that I took back in 2014. Uh, He he was part of that little sketch that we had written um, and came up in did that uh, in uh, Utah, and then he moved to L.A. about the same time I did, and now he actually lives up here in uh, near Salt Lake. So anyway, he and I went to lunch and just caught up, and he and I performed improv together. We did a bunch of stuff together, and it was just really great to, to catch up with him. But, um, you know, we were just talking about, uh, you know, life in general and all of the things that have happened and all the ups and downs and... Um, you know, I, I started to talk about how um, oftentimes, you know, I'll I'll be talking to somebody and I'll say like, oh, yeah, you know, um, you know, I submitted a video of mine to America's Got Talent and they'll get really excited and they'll say like, oh, well, well, what happened? And I just said, oh, well, you know, they didn't like the video or they didn't put me on the show or whatever. And then there's this sort of like, well what do you need to do differently or what is it they're looking for? Right. This also happens a lot with, with social media. I'll talk to people um, about, you know, putting social media content out there and there's almost this like urgency of like, well, what if you tried doing this to get, to go viral on video? Or if you, what, what if you did a video like this that might go viral? Right. And it sort of turns into this, notion of like do whatever it takes or be whoever you need to be to get a viral video or to get on America's Got Talent or you know whatever to try to like force a a big opportunity or force a big break and I just go in well first of all because I don't want to do those other things like I don't want to go viral on social media just for the sake of going viral Like, I'm not, I'm not, like, if I wanted to go viral, I I could just go, you know, be obnoxious or I could do something horrible. You know what I mean? Like, to me, fame is not, fame at all costs or fame for fame's sake is of no interest to me. Or going viral on social media for virality's sake is also of no interest to me. What I'm interested in doing is being as authentic as I can as my ego will allow me to be and to put my art and my content and my comedy and my acting out to the world, you know, on social media. And also, you know, when I perform live in the manner that is most fulfilling to me and and most exciting and, and the most fun and enjoyable and, um, and, if doing that happens to bring fame or, you know, make a viral video pop off, well, that's great because then it's actually a sustainable thing and I'm, and it's also fulfilling for me. But I'm not going to, to 
try to just get famous or just try to get money if it means that, first of all, I have to be something I'm not, or secondly, if it means that I don't get to enjoy the people and the relationships that are meaningful and fulfilling to me while I'm pursuing that journey. And um, that to me I, is is what I've been thinking about as I was listening to this this chapter where, you know, this this author sort of had to learn that the hard way. And he learned it an interesting way, which is actually getting everything that he thought he wanted and then having it all taken away and realize that that isn't what he really wanted anyway. When he was picturing, you know, and envisioning his goals and what he wanted, he 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 neglected the important thing, which is who are the people who are there with me when I have the big house and the beach and who is in the driver who is in the passenger seat of that Ferrari that I'm driving. Um, and, you know, I, I, and I think about that a lot and I'm fortunate enough to where I haven't achieved everything that I've ever wanted financially. You know, I, I've I've never been a uh, multimillionaire and then had to have it all taken away. So, you know, I feel like I'm fortunate that I get to learn this without having to, you know, lo- lo- lose my mansion and, uh, you know, my wife and and becoming estranged from my wife and children. Because I don't have any of those either. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm very happy. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that that is... I mean, I mean, pretty much what this chapter is leading up to is this idea that when you are pursuing a dream and you're looking to manifest and accomplish and achieve your dreams, that you really want to think more about what type of relationships do you want to have. And when it comes to, you know, wealth and abundance and, you know, having a house and having a car, it's like, well, having a house and having a car isn't going to make anybody happy. If the people in that, if there are not people there in that house who you love and who you enjoy being with and um, are, you know, provide fulfillment and joy and support, you know, to you and you provide support and joy and fulfillment to them. So I am always thinking about that. And thinking about that a lot more now that I have been uh, listening to this book. And I think that was a really good reminder. And it's all sort of wrapped up into this, you know, seeing seeing Dr. Hartman, this uh, this really successful doctor up in Ogden, Utah, who's had this incredibly successful career as a medical professional, has this incredible family. But then, you know, he gets to enjoy that house and enjoy that beautiful property with not only his family, who all are there with him and help and support him throw this Harry Potter party, but then he gets to share in that dream and that vision that he had to be a successful doctor with countless thousands and thousands and thousands of people who then get to come to his property and get to share in this cultural phenomenon known as Harry Potter. And, you know... That to me is just so much more of a fulfilling um, manifestation of a dream than, you know, having a gigantic mansion that's empty and having, you know, jeopardized the most important relationships in your life to try to get that mansion almost at the expense of those relationships. So good little life lesson there. Good little life lesson. All right, everybody, that is all for today. I hope that your dreams are coming true and that you are pursuing them in a manner that is fulfilling in that you are surrounded by beautiful people and um, fulfilling meaningful relationships in your lives. So this is the Paul Green Comedy Podcast for October 27th, 2024, episode 305, recording from Salt Lake City, Utah, 
on the heels of my trip up here to play Lord Voldemort at the nation's, arguably the nation's largest Harry Potter party. And thanks to Dr. Hartman for uh, putting on that community service every year. All right, everybody. I love you all so much. I will check in with you tomorrow, tomorrow.